this garden with a limited area, instead of using the pipe in the trench method, we've used a borehole for the ground source heat pump. This has involved getting a drilling rig in to drill 80 metres down into the earth below. We've had the geological survey done on the ground, so it's not a hit and miss operation. We actually know what's under the ground metre by metre. We know at what depth we're going to reach the water table, and then we go down through there, we know what's below there, and we're aiming for about 80 metres deep. And that will take the ground source heat collector pipe down into the ground, deep down into the ground, so that it can extract that heat year in, year out, all through the seasons, at a fairly regular, somewhere between three and five degrees centigrade, they tell us. Now I'm just going to explain this because once they start drilling, they're going to chuck us off the site. They only want the skilled guys on who know what they're doing. All the spectators have got to go outside. So I'll just show you very briefly what's going to happen. Once that hole is drilled, they drop this pipe down here. Now this pipe is a very strong pipe, polyethylene pipe. It's made to withstand that extra pressure. Because it goes so deep, it's going to have a massive static head on it. So it's made to withstand that onto the end of that pipe to make sure that it doesn't float back up and that it goes right to the bottom of the hole. They put this massive weight. This is bolted onto the end of that pipe. That's twin-walled pipe. So the water and glycol mix, which is over here, is going to be put into the pipe and the pipe is going to be lowered down into the hole as it goes, filled up, weighted, and that will sit in there. The water will then be pumped down, the water and glycol pumped down into the thing, grab the heat and then away. So, a metre below the ground, they terminate the pipe, cut it off there, and then change it to a couple of elbows. That pipe can then go in, it's a thinner walled pipe because it hasn't got so much pressure, and that will then go directly into the heat pump. But there's one very important thing, because at that point, it can actually freeze in the ground. And if it freezes in the ground, of course the whole thing just locks up solid. So what we have is insulation here, which stops the transfer from the cold to the hot, so that those remain independent. There's one other thing that's happening here. Because we've got a rainwater harvester, which is basically a big tank that sits under the ground to collect the rainwater for use, there is a possibility that if that cold pipe goes past the rainwater harvester and just takes heat out of the rainwater harvester all the time, you could actually freeze the rainwater harvester. So this insulation is very thick, class O insulation, very high grade to make sure that that doesn't happen. Well, the drilling's finally underway, and as I say, they're going down 80 metres. Now, you might wonder how they arrive at that magical figure of 80 metres. They're not drilling for oil or water, so in a way, they can go as deep or as shallow as they like from that point of view. But the 80 metres gives them the required length to match the heat requirement of the house. In other words, they've done an assessment on the house, found out how much heat the house will need, and then they've measured that distance per, per metre of ground source heat collected if you like and that gives them the 80 meters down into the ground of course if it was a bigger house they could go deeper and these guys are telling me that they can go down 800 meters So with the borehole complete and the pipework lowered and grouted in, the pipe is now in the trench and it's ready to be connected up to the heat pump. The glycol is added through the pump unit, which mixes the solution and works the free air out of the water. The glycol concentration is carefully checked and the solution is then fed into the heat pump to complete the circuit. 